the first thing we have to do is remove a red herring. Because people will say, well, Christianity this and Christianity that. But we're not talking about Christianity at all. We're talking about Judaism. We're talking about first century Judaism. We're talking about pre horbon Judaism. We're talking about Jews. Forget the Goyim. These are Jews in the Beis Amikdash. They are Torah observant. It says, you see Akba Mashiach, they're talking to Rav Shaul. Uh, you know, how many thousands of Yidden there are here. Thus, believe. Um, you know, they're, they're from Mishihistim. You see that? From Mishihistim. They believe. And they are all, and you see this word here, and they are all zealous for the Torah. Now, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about from Mishihistim, in the Beis HaMikdash, who believe, and they are all zealous for the Torah. They are Torah observant. And they see Mashiach ben David in every verse. And they're preaching the Tehas Hamasim. Because the elders and the uh, Shalahim have seen Mashiach ben David alive from the dead. And they're preaching this in Yerushalayim. And Rav Shaul is going out to the Goyim. He's not giving them the laws of Noah. He's giving them the Basura Sagelah, and there are so many of them coming to faith. And these believers are glad that they're coming to faith because this means salvation from, from perdition. They don't want anyone to perish. But you have to understand, they themselves are not Goyim. So all your arguments about Christianity are just uh, red herring diversions. Now let's go back. We're, we're talking about the Tehiyas Hamasim. Now here we get to Yohanan. And uh, he is uh, in verse 8 of chapter 20. Um, it's It says... Um, that he, he gets to the kever first, but he doesn't go in. Sh Shimon Kepha goes in. Uh, Kepha goes in first. And then it says, and uh, the other is go in also. The other, that is the other uh, Talmud what should come first to the kever. And he had seen. What did he see? He saw the takrahim. You see this up here? And of course, there was evidence of a, of a dematerialization and a materialization because the head wrapping, the mitznefet, had been neatly folded and, and placed at the head of what looked like a deflated balloon. The Takrahim uh, had actually def deflated. The, the, you know, if a body snatcher, a, a, a grave robber, had uh, torn at the uh, Takrahim to get the body out, that would have been obvious. But this was not what Yohanan saw. That would not have brought him to faith. What brought him to faith was the Takrahim uh, giving evidence of a dematerialization. That the uh, Mashiach had obviously stood up and folded the Mitznefet head wrapping like you would get up from the bed and fold up your pajamas. And he had neatly left everything like that. And of course, then he dematerialized uh, at the breaking of the Matzot on the road to Emmaus. He materialized in the locked upper room 
among the Shalihim who were very much afraid. And he just appeared in their midst. He materialized. So this dematerialization and materialization, uh, Yohanan obviously witnessed with the Takrahim, and that's what brought him to faith, even before the appearances. Now, we're going to flip over here, and we're going to look at the doctrine of the Tahiyas Hamasim. In Daniel, what does it say? Uh, chapter, chapter 12, it says, verse 2, Many that sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to chaye olam, everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And this word here, um, For, for shame, Dura'on. This is from the last verse of Isaiah. But it's not just Dura'on, it's Dura'on Olam, eternal Dura'on. Eternal fire, eternal grave worm, maggot. The last verse of Isaiah. This is perdition. This is what is involved here, not just the Tehiyas Hamasim, but the judgment, where the sheep will be on one side and the ghosts will be on the other side. Now in Daniel, uh, if you'll look at uh, Daniel chapter 7, verses uh, 13 and 14, Uh, you know, we we know that um, the Baranosh will be worshipped as deity because of this word Palak. Uh, it says all peoples will will come, and they will Palak. Do you see that? Pay Lamed Het. And there's a note here telling you to look at page 848. If you look at 848, you'll see in chapter 3, verse 18, um, that the idols will not be Palak. So, Moshiach is not an idol, but he is to be worshipped as deity. You can check this out in Marcus Jastrow's Aram Aramaic Dictionary used by the Yeshiva Bokers, that Palak means to, to worship as deity. And uh, here you see the word Palak be used regarding the... Um, the idols of Nebuchadnezzar, which they will not palak the idols, but all peoples, including the ones that won't palak the idols, will all palak the Baranosh. And of course, Rashi tells us in his commentary that the, the Baranosh is Moshiach. He says, this is Ribi, this is Melech HaMoshiach. This is exact words of Rashi. Now, you go over here, and uh, you get to Psalm 16, and you see this word right here, Shachat. The Ben Dovid will not see Shachat. He will be hanged on a tree. Yes, we know that from 2 Samuel chapter 18, where Avshalom is pierced and hanging on a tree. And the Mavaser cannot run with the peace, bringing Basurus, Basura Tova. He can't run with it until the Ben Dovid is pierced. 
Musar Shalomeno Olav, the, the, the chastisement that brought us peace was upon him, upon the Mashiach. Now that's Psalm 1610. Then you get over here to Isaiah chapter uh, 53. And uh, you see this word, um, kever. Fifty-three-eight, fifty-three-nine. 8, 53, 9. You see that word? His kever. But even though it speaks of his kever and his death, it also says that the Lord will prolong his days. Do you see that? He will, his days will be prolonged. Now, if you're in the kever, your days are prolonged. I'm putting one finger under kever, and I'm putting one finger, one finger under prolong his days. Here you have the doctrine of the Tereas HaMoshiach, that the Moshiach will be resurrected. Now, if he is to be Palach as God, in Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, and if he is the Baranosh Moshiach, according to Rashi, should we be that surprised that he can overcome death and bring immortality to light so that the Basuras Hagel law can be preached? Now, what have I shown in this video? I've shown that, that it, it, to argue about Christianity is a red herring because we're talking about a Judaism that predates rabbinic Judaism that is practiced during the days of the Beis HaMikdash where Torah observant and Torah zealous Jews are preaching the Moshiach in every verse of the Bible. They are zealous for every verse for the Torah itself. They see him everywhere. They're preaching him everywhere, and they believe in him. Then we saw that one particular Talmud comes to faith because he sees evidence of a, of a dematerialization and a materialization in the Takrahim and the folding up of the Mitznefet head wrapping. And that materialization and dematerialization continues in the appearances, but he was already a believer before the appearances because of Yohanan chapter 20, verse 8. So here you have it. God has demonstrated this. And you have to remember something. The Brit Hashah is written in Jewish blood. These are Jews, and they die as martyrs, al-Kiddish Hashem, rather than refute their testimony. The Brit Hashah is one of the best attested books of antiquity in terms of the integrity of the manuscript. What are we talking about? We're talking about the Ribi Melech HaMoshiach and the Tehiyas Hamasim, the resurrection of the dead. And we're saying that if you want to get right with God, you better make peace with this one who's made your kapora, who loves you, who stood up alive for your justification. Just like Boaz stood up alive so that uh, so that Elimelech and, Mal and Malone could vicariously stand up through him and in him to reclaim the lost inheritance of their redemption. And if you look at um, the end of the book of Ruth, chapter 4, you'll see that the etz is the etz of the Temurah. It is the it's of the substitution that, that the Redeemer from the tribe of Judah purchases the bride. We get his righteousness. My righteous servant will justify many. And he takes our sin as the sin bearer, the Sayer Lazazel that bears it away, carries it away. The lamb led to the slaughter.
whose blood takes us out of Egypt. Lord, I pray right now that you, Lord, will open the eyes of some Hasid today so that he can see great and wonderful things in your Torah. Amen.